Hi everyone, it's Jenny with Joey and Jenny's Little Yellow House. We're on YouTube and Instagram at Joey143Jenny and we're on Facebook at Joey and Jenny's Little Yellow House. Okay, well I just wanted to come and do a kind of a quick video and just show you the results of some of my attempt at eco dyeing. And as you can see, um, I did take my polish off. I haven't put new on. I wanted to show you this. <laughs> Um, this has nothing to do with, well, it has a little bit to do with crafting, I guess, but you know, I told you with that sometimes crafting and nail polish, you know, don't necessarily go well together, but I usually get this fast dry top coat to put over my polish and it causes the nail polish to dry quickly. And then it puts like this, um, really tight top coat on it. And the one I get, I can't remember the name of it, I get in in town at the city that we go to at the at the um, beauty supply store. It's it's not super expensive for how long it lasts, but you know, it, it's costly. Um, but it works really well and it's self-leveling and I love it. But I was running out, so um, I went to Walmart this last time and I got this, I don't know if you can see it, it's LA Colors Nail Treatment Quick Gloss Fast Drying Top Coat High Gloss Finish Seals in the Polish. Okay, super fast. Okay, I am not even kidding you. This stuff worked so well and my nail polish lasted. I, I can't even believe how long it lasted and how much I was in water. So um, <laughs> I had and I... And it does take a little time to get your nail polish off with either one that I use, you know, with nail polish remover, um, because that top coat that seals in so tight. Um, but this one, I, I don't know, I'm going to use it again and see, was it just a fluke and that in combination with the polish I used? I don't know, but I loved it. So I thought, well, I'm going to show you. All right. So this was my first attempt this past time. And, uh, what did I, how did I do this? Um, I basically just took paper, copy paper, and I laid out leaves. I laid out, I'll try to identify what they are. And I laid out, uh, flower petals, um, you know, and just laid them out. And then what I did was I bound it with some twine and then I uh, poured coffee over it. So, um, very little happened. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not. And it, it, I'm looking in the camera and I think you can see more in person. Uh, so I'll tell you a couple of things that I noticed and maybe some errors as well. Um, one thing is I'm, I don't know if you remember that I use like the cheap copy paper at Walmart and I use the next level up. It's more like a one that says something about nature or something. And I like how digitals look on that one. I can't think of the name of it, but if you go to Walmart, it's like the next level up. It's like six ninety seven a ream. Um, I really like how digitals look on that, but once you get it wet, and I've noticed this before, and I thought maybe I did something different, but once you get it wet, it feels like homemade paper, uh, kind of like construction paper. It's very rough, and it has a th kind of a thick sound to it, versus this is, hear that crinkle? That's just regular coffee paper, and this has a thicker sound to it. I think I prefer the regular coffee or copy paper uh, when dyeing, so I, I need to remember that next time. Another thing I did uh, with this one is um, I the thing that I had over it to kind of help compress it so I could tie it didn't fully go over the entire thing. So on almost every one of them, I have this little split here. So lesson learned there. And then the next day when I did more, I um, 
I, I kind of fixed that. Another thing is, in, um, I may have told you on a previous one that I was going to watch some videos to see what, you know, what I'm doing, what, what I could be doing different. And I noticed one girl used um, some tweezers to help her along the way. And I had kind of warped my tweezers a little bit trying to fix something. <laughs> I used it for something it wasn't intended to, to be used for. So I gave it to Joey and I could not find it in his craft area. But anyways, so I went and I had this brand new one still in the package in my um, beauty supplies and grabbed it. And I have to say, this made a huge difference between this pile that I'm showing you now and the one I'm going to show you in a minute. Peeling off things went so much easier. I'm going to use this just even to coffee dye because lifting up even just the page to be able to get a grip really goes so much smoother than um, when it's wet trying to use your hands and smashing it or ripping it. Um, I don't think I ripped one page using these, which surprised me. I mean, there's rips, but it's not from um, me handling it with this. Um, and like things like this, I don't know if you can see that little dot. Um, when they're wet, this one is already dried in. Uh, that's a little piece of petal. Um, you can use this to kind of lift it up. Now this was a glob and um i let that just dry in and that was from the other day before i even grabbed these so all right so anyways i don't know if you can see there's a lot of leaves and a lot of things on here and there's a little bit of uh morning glory down here the morning glories really show through in this um you may not be able to see so like this is a good example had this been wet um, and I had been using these, uh, these would have been very easy to peel up, but, um, I think I'm just going to leave them on there. Uh, I can't remember what that is actually that may dry and come off. I don't know. I mean, it's dry, but it might start flaking off. I don't know, but I'm not going to mess with it cause I don't want to, I don't want to tear up the paper. Um, so this one turned out okay. Um, I, I don't know. I I really learned a lot, and as we go, I'll I'll tell you some of the things I learned. But this was my first batch, uh, kind of winging it on my, you know, winging it without looking up anything. Um, so here's another little piece of morning glory. I don't even know if you can see this. Um, it's uh, kind of a fern leaf. It's not a real fern. It's a some some kind of tree leaf that looks like a fern and then these left imprint and I haven't ironed or anything um, these which I do like the look of how it came out are we have some clematis growing on the side of the picket fence and these are the spent flowers uh, this one turned out okay None of them really are super spectacular, but, you know, they're, they're keepers. I'll definitely use them. And then this was the one that was on top of that one. This one I think I even like better, really. Here's some more little flower things. One thing I did learn um, is thin flower petals, for me, did not work well. Um, example, petunias did not work well. I thought this looked pretty good. Um, this is, again, uh, Morning Glory. And the Morning Glory, to me, the petals looked like they were as thin as the um, petunias, but they must hold up better because they, they turned out great. Also, my rose petals were okay. Um they came out they came out okay they didn't color very much but um they came out okay you know and here's another one i don't know if you can see that tree branch this is um this one is a little bit messy actually um from just stuff from the pan i think 
Um, this is just Black Eyed Susans from from um, the side of the house. They almost look fake, don't they? Kind of look like I drew them on there. This is one of our, or this is um, a Japanese maple. So the imprint is good, just not a lot of color. And this is all natural, you know, just natural with a little bit of coffee sprinkled on. And these are rose petals on top of this leaf. Hear that difference? That's a thicker sound. And then this one, I love it, that one. Okay, so that that's definitely something I'll do in the, in the future is, um, you know, just use the copy paper, I think. All right, so then um, I had done a bunch more. And <clears throat> the other night, day before yesterday, excuse me, I went through all these and decided which ones do I kind of like, you know, that I'll keep the way they are, which are these, and which ones do I want to toss back in, because I didn't want to spend more, I didn't want to use more paper, especially because I had a whole handful that I wasn't super thrilled with, so I thought I'm just going to stick them back in. So that's what I did, and when I got them um, ready and in the pot and all of that, I thought, oh, I should have put some, I should have put some envelopes. So then I grabbed some envelopes and tossed them on top, and this is how they turned out, which is kind of fun, a little grungy, um, which is okay because you know sometimes that. See, this is just. This is just metal bit. Um, to me, I don't usually, like I've never done like a grungy journal and I don't know that I would. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think I, I think sometimes this grunge looks, makes your, um, your softer things stand out even more, you know, especially if you're doing like something antique. So somehow that one broke. Um, you know, if you're making something antique. So see this, this isn't dirty. It's, well, I guess, depending on what you think dirt is, but this is, um, little metal from the metal I put in the pot. And I'll tell you all about that here in a second. Um, let me show you all these first though, while I kind of separate. So yeah. Oh, and another thing was... <laughs> Um, I put a big, a big garden block on top, um, to weigh it all down. There's this, so this basically is about the extent of the rust, really. Um, okay. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm so sorry. This one's really grungy. Look at that. That picked up a lot of the metal. Let's see if I can get it open here. Wowza. This one would look good with a vintage photo on it, you know. I don't know what happened here. That's weird. I think it was just... This must have come that way. All right. Okay, so that's that. All right, so here's what I did. Um, I don't know. Do you remember I told you I bought this, like, fried chicken cooker <laughs> at the thrift store for just under $15? So it's, it's about this big, uh, rectangular. And um, I thought... Maybe that would be better than because I can't I'm I don't have the what it takes to cook it outside. So um yeah, so a couple of things again I want to re-emphasize if you know what you're using as far as botanicals, just make sure that either you're in a very well ventilated area or um you, you know, you know that anything that you're using and cooking, <laughs> which is what I did cooked, 
um, that it is not going to put off any poison oils or any anything in the air that could cause you or anyone around you to um, have any harm. So I just want to put that out there because um, all the things I used, I thought, oh, these are things that I touch and everything all day long. And, you know, I have, I'm hard of smelling, so I've lost my sense of smell, so I don't smell things hardly at all. And so I thought to myself, after that stuff was steaming and simmering away, would I even know if it smelled bad in here? You know, like alarmingly bad. Um, and it made me think, gosh, maybe some of these could be cooking off an oil or something that might be toxic. I don't know. So far, so good. I'm, um... 24 hours plus, probably 28 hours past the time that I cooked it, cooked everything and I've cleaned everything up and washed it and everything's dried and I don't have any issues. So I'm hoping, um, that, you know, in the future that will s still be the case. Okay. So I had my cooker and then these, this is just an, you know, I think you can probably get it at the Dollar Tree or something. I bought it because I wanted to use it for um, coffee dyeing, and uh, so what I did was I grabbed, it was, you know, like this, it was an actual pan, and I just smashed it down, and then I got, I had this already, I got this, can you believe it, at a garage sale, it wasn't folded, I folded that yesterday, and um, it was like in the free bucket. I have no idea what it was used for. Maybe maybe some type of a ventilation. I don't know. Um, but what I did was I, I laid it like this. And then I piled, you know, um, I'll use these as an example. Okay, so... So, um, I'm going to show you what I did and then I'll show you the results. Um, so what I did was I took a big, uh, this manila envelope and I laid it first. Okay. Then I took paper. I sprayed it with water to get it damp. And then I had this time I decided to use a few dyes. So I had yellow, kind of a raspberry magenta red and a country blue. Um, so what I did was I sprayed it with water and then whatever color I wanted, I sprayed. And this worked really well using a little spray bottle like this. I think I got these at either Walmart or Dollar Tree. Uh, I only had one to use. And so I started with yellow, probably why that one's so yellow. I started with yellow and just gave a little spritz and then I started piling on my leaves. And then after that, I put another one down and I spritzed and then um, did the yellow. So I did colors kind of at one time um, because I just had the one spray bottle. And then what I did was I took the yellow out of that spray bottle, what was left, and put it in a little, um, I had a little sour cream cup that uh, I had saved. So I poured that in and then I put blue in the sprayer. And so then I did a section of blue, you know, and uh, so I sprayed it with blue, put leaves down and flowers, sprayed with blue, leaves down and flowers, sprayed with blue, leaves down and flowers. And then I took another plastic cup and I poured the blue in and then I filled the um, thing up with red and did the same process. So I layered them. Now my hope was that as these papers that I'm going to show you cooked um, that they would blend so I would have yellow to orange to red yellow to green to blue um, blue to red to purple you know I was I would have all of that but what ended up happening is they almost all just stayed where I had put them which was interesting to me um, so then after I did this I, after I did all of that, then I put another one on top. So look at this, look at the difference. So I put another one on top and then, um, I closed it up like this and, uh, I just wrapped it every which way with twine 
keep it nice and you know together and then um I had put some rusty nails of Joey's in the bottom of my pan of my cooker and I had um let's see I had rusty nails then I had this this twined up mess here um and then uh <laughs> I had forgotten and so I put the envelopes then on top of that mess <laughs> And then I had to, had put water to cover and I put a cup of vinegar and I put one tea bag and I turned it on to boil. And once it started boiling, I let it simmer for about an hour, eh, about 45 minutes. I, I'm impatient. I couldn't help it. Um, so a few things there. Oh, and then I went back and decided I better put some peroxide in there to get that, the rust going. I don't know if that made a difference because I didn't see hardly any rust. I'll show you. Didn't see hardly any rust. Um, I, I don't know that the tea bag made a huge I don't know. I just was throwing everything in there. It was a, it was basically a stew. <laughs> so let's let's look at these. <clears throat> now they like I said they did not necessarily turn out like I had hoped in the sense that um they just kind of layered but they are pretty. That one you can't really even see any of the um some of these anything that was hard to get off I just left it. Because I didn't want to tear anything. Uh, this this was pine needles. I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, it kind of everything kind of turned out rainbow pastelli, um, which was not exactly what I was going for, but I still think it's it turned out okay. Now I don't know if you can see all of these little bubbles. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there are. On some of these, and I think it's where the peroxide hit, there's these little bubbles. So I'm going to try that even when I coffee dye next time. I'm going to try a little bit of peroxide. Uh, these were rose petals. And then this one was laying on top of a, a couple of um, leaves. But do you see what I'm saying? How the, how the dye almost just stayed stayed where it was this any anytime you see any of that black that's from that rust and I think that's probably because I had the tea bag in there and I don't think it liked it and I think I learned that lesson before well I think I saw that happen before but I guess I forgot that I had learned a lesson <laughs> here is another one this had grass long grass <clears throat> I love this one. This one's probably one of my favorite. This one was close to the bottom. These are all rose petals. And yes, this was close to, no, this one was close to the top because I wanted to put some fabric in and had kind of forgotten. So I peeled back some of uh, the paper. And I don't know if you can see right here the hem of some cloth and I'll show you that in a little bit but didn't that turn out really pretty this is more what I was going for this one I don't know that it has you can see hardly any 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 leaves on that this was there was a leaf here look at this little curly cue <laughs> or not a leaf this was like a off of a tree I can't think of what kind of tree that was and then this is the back side which turned out pretty cool okay this one's obviously a copy paper in my mind um, here's a big leaf here looks like some grass back there I just piled them on top of each other 
This one's uh, that other paper. This is where I had, so again, remember these papers had already been in that previous process where I tried to dye them. So this is where I tried to scrape one off with my fingernail and got it kind of icky. Isn't that pretty? I don't know if you can see that all, but here's another one that I really love. This one was, again, closer to the top. Or maybe the bottom, I don't know. Has a lot of that rust, so. But I love it. And I am not real sure. Look at this. You see all those little green dots? That's kind of neat. Okay. Here's one that got folded. <laughs> it's three leaves here. Maybe you can see better on the back. These are evergreen. And um, what are those? I can't remember what those are. <laughs> but I got I went out and, and pulled some of the bristles off the evergreen or whatever they're called. This is, I believe, um, one of my peonies, and I like how the purple came out of that. And then this is a big weed or something on the side of the house out by the, the neighbor's woods. This one got pretty beat up. Oh, I know what those dots are. I know what they are. Uh, on the first run, when I did them previous, I had put raspberries. And um, again, a lesson learned there is if you have too much depth, it makes indentations. And in this case, on a couple of them, it actually tore through. Um, which reminds me, on the second attempt, anything, especially like this, these really big ones here, Anything that had a really, really thick stem, I cut the stem off, and then um, this part, the vein, um, I flipped it over where the vein stood up, and I trimmed it down a little bit, just so it wouldn't be too bulky. This goes to a piece that ripped, which I love that. Here's some more of the um, Japanese maple. This one, I can't tell which is, you can see a leaf here and here and here. Here, this one just really got a lot of different things going on. Same here. And a lot of these are damaged on the sides just because uh, they were from the previous batch, remember, and I had it tied in. Um, these are rose petals. This turned out kind of pretty. There's another one that got kind of icked up on the first try. I don't know if you can see those pretty leaves there. Some more peony and that big leaf again. Here's the one I think this goes to. So that's kind of neat. I love this part. So this one must have been close to the top or the bottom because it has that imprint. Those are peonies. This is pretty right here. How that kind of transfers a little bit. So this one you can definitely see the vein. You can even see it here where it pops up a little bit. I 
I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know. I would decide I'd love to hear what you think of them. Um, they're just so different than I had hoped. I like them, but they're different than I had hoped. And so it makes me want to do them again. Okay, that one turned out okay. I, I just like this, this uh, more natural. And I had just hoped that the colors would kind of blend a little bit and not just stay. But pretty colors. <laughs> so they'll wear on me. I've just been looking at them for um, days, sitting and drying and all of that. Okay, so then, oh wait, here's another one. Um, that's pretty. This does have a little bit of blending on it. Love that. Here's some of the um, twine. Different turned out different colors, which I loved. Oh, you know what this is? This is twine that I had cut off from the bundle before I dyed it, and then I just splattered it with dye. That's what that is. I was going to say, well, how did I do that? Um, <clears throat> and so here's a doily that I had put in there. I don't know if you can see this leaf here, which is really quite neat. Um, and then the color is just kind of tie dyed a little bit. <laughs> and then this is that one that we could see on the paper. Now this one, isn't that neat how that turned out? I really like that. Okay. And then I had this this one. This is a napkin, cloth napkin. And I actually had this um once I put this down I laid this on top of it so it was on the bottom of the of the cooker and it turned out really pretty I think so as this all was drying it smelled a little bit like kind of like when you cook greens <clears throat> And then you put vinegar on it. It kind of has a um, seaweed smell, which isn't super awesome. Um, but I, to be honest, I I gave them all a little spritz of downy. <laughs> I couldn't take the smell, um, so it calmed it down a little bit. I had some downy spray, and I gave it a spritz. <laughs> Well, all right, that's it, and um, we're, we'll play with these, we'll definitely play with them, we'll figure something out, I love this twine, I'll probably put that in the pickle jar, we'll figure it out, I think what, I think my, the reason I'm having a hard time with it is there's, it's just so, there's so much of it together, so I think once I take it out and put it with something else, you know, take a page out, put it with something else. Um, I'm going to love it. I absolutely love this page. I love that page. All right, everyone, let me know what you think. And um, let me know if you've eco dyed and what your tips are, your tips and tricks. So the things I'm going to do again, I'll just let you know, I'm going to do this again. I'll, I'll definitely use this and um, what, you know, in a, intertwine them like that with one of these on the top and the bottom that worked out really well um i'm going to i think what i'm going to do is mix up some some rust water and i think i'm going to spray those in between the the layers in combination with maybe some watered down 
pigment if I decide to do pigment. Now, I gotta remind myself, don't use rust water with coffee or tea because, um, I mean, you can, but you'll get this really, really, really dark, 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 dark. Um, so if that's what you're going for, definitely use it. And I do like the dark, I have to say, but I like it in contrast with the lighter part. So I have to think through that. And then the other thing that I think I'm going to try is a little bit of peroxide. I don't know. Kind of wondering about it. See if it bubbles, you know, causes little bubbles. Just be careful. You don't want to have like a chemist lab in, in the kitchen and um, somebody come home and find all these pretty papers and you pass down on the floor. <laughs> so be super careful. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. And we want to thank all of those that have subscribed and leave us sweet, sweet comments. We just love it so much. We want you to know that we pray blessings over you and you're so loved. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.